The last product I owned that was Sony was a laptop eight, uh, seven or eight years ago, and I will never touch another Sony product. Because Sony also, we had this, talk, com this conversation last time. The only company that's really been able to pull off proprietary media in this recent age has been Apple. Mm. And the, But the difference is Apple at least kind of knows how to addict their people to their products. Sony <laughs> doesn't. Um, they just, they just kind of half-ass it. Even Samsung went, you know what, we'll just make better versions of the shit everybody else makes. So like mm -hmm. Solid State and Flash Media, for example, Samsung's always in the top three. Yep. Um, Apple makes quality. Yeah, but Recon, that gap is closing. Apple's quality is a narrow modifier. Um, but being forcefully proprietary is, is a dumb thing to do. And also it gets you made fun of. Like when Apple released that monitor stand, that was it just looked like it was made out of monolith stone. But other than that, it was just a common fucking monitor stand and you had people like drooling and salivating to get it bitches it's a monitor stand like Yo, what apple got people Yo. brainwashed for real for real like i'd be sitting here oh, like what? and that's i think you you know what i run both and you I, said it on, I think you said it on facebook once apple got y'all on stockholm syndrome mm -hmm. i was like bruh I, no, I run both phones. I run an app, iPhone and an Android, and I'm like, yo, there isn't. I don't feel like one is really superior over the other, or or even. Or like, four, four plus years ago, four four and more years ago, going back, there was this big divergence of quality. Over the last few four years, that gap has almost closed, and Apple hasn't had anything on the market. I said when Steve Jobs passed away. The innovation died yeah. with him. The innovation died with him, because then ever since he, because it, ever, ever it, since he this died, is his company. There's there's no soul behind it anymore. It's just ever since he died, how like, can we make it full profitable? Ever since he died, all that innovation that we were doing was gone. I'm like, bro, like they haven't done anything where. Well, well, Apple now their strategy is is okay. Somebody comes out with a new feature. But their true is okay. They'll make it on their platform. But they'll try to. Two, two, but they'll, they'll try send to, them to it two or three generations later and say it was theirs. Not only that, they'll try to make it better. So by basically, by the time they actually put it on Apple, like most of most most of the other platforms have perfected it, and they just okay. Now we're just add, now we're gonna add it to our stuff, and then everybody's like, "Oh, Apple got some such now." I'm like, "Yo, y'all like four years late on that." Apple has one advantage, one and one only, one significant advantage, and it's even not that significant. And that's security. Apple shit is more secure than Android, but that gap has also been closing. Like, they're running out of their edge is the short version. I, I give them that. The only reason why it's more secure is because Steve Linux Jobs pinning. always... Perf Steve Jobs always wanted a, 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 a closed system. He always like, yo, I want it closed, I want it closed, I want it closed. So that gave them the edge in security because for the longest, like, every biography and documentary I've read up on... With Apple has been like Steve Wozniak always fighting them to open everything up. Like, yo, open it up, open it up. We gotta open it up. We gotta make it more compatible with everything. He's like, no, I want it closed. I want it like this. And I mean, there's an advantage. There's an advantage in both directions. But by making it a closed system, you also close off your. So software, just like people, benefits from a certain degree of diversity. Mm -hmm. So when you only have one system using one architecture and you only make it all work together one way, you don't ever figure anything out. You are secure. Mm -hmm. You are secure and streamlined, but that's all you are. So. And Android's closing that gap. Windows is closing that gap. Like Apple is running out of its edge. Yep. And right, and and you know, and, and you know, you know, in America, you know, there's a lot of folks that have the large. There's a large people. There's a large group of people that have, you no, know, iPhones, Apple phones, and stuff. But I'm like, mm -hmm. and yo, internationally, yo, Android killing y'all. Not everybody has yeah. an iPhone outside Apple, of the United Apple States is. like that. That's because Apple's fine, but their bigger investment is marketing, not product. Yeah, they've always been good at marketing. Shoot, they but, got. Uh, that's why. Like, that's why when like they got rid of one of their best marketers, like a few years ago, I was sitting there like. Everybody was like, "Yo, why'd y'all do that?" <laughs> like, so I think it was it was it was this lady called Bozema St. John, and everybody was saying like, pretty much, she's the one that made like Apple Music, like, 
the way it was, and then you know Apple Music is kind of, Apple Music is okay now, but like it used to be like Apple Music and iTunes used to be like the shit. And that's because she was behind it. So like, um, oh, dude, yeah, you YouTube Music and Google Music blew them out of the water when they when they came out. Now now everybody's on. No, now the number one thing is it's now the number one is Spotify, and I'm just like. Is that that shit with Pandora? Pandora for a shit with annoying rap shit that I'm tired of seeing. Yes. Spotify is the number one streaming streaming service for music. Then then I think it's Apple Music and then you know there's you YouTube Music and you know Tidal and all that other stuff now. But it's Spotify. But it was because the the person's both of them Saint John. She she did uh, a limited promotion run for Spotify because she left Apple. There was like a bidding war for her. Pretty much, it was like, yo, they were people recognized her as like a really good marketer and good chief, chief media officer or whatever. And everybody was trying to steal her from Apple. And it was just like, yo, Apple's not going to be able to afford her. And which ended up happening. Like, she went over to, um, she went over to Pepsi for a little bit. Then she went over work for Spotify for a limited for a limited time. It wasn't even like she was like Spotify's head of media, which she should have been, but she did like a limited promotion run for them and Spotify just grew exponentially after that. And then it still it still continues its run today. But it was like damn Apple like y'all should it was kinda like Apple like the one thing y'all y'all know for marketing, y'all didn't want to spend the money on this lady. I, uh, well, like, in, in my channel, Raycon said, he was talking about, like, he just gets what he likes. Here's the thing. At this point, Apple and Android is product preference. There's no... Apple doesn't have anything really nailed in superiority anymore. It's fine. It's it's equivalent. But it, now it's just... It's it's literally only user preference. There's yeah. no significant... Everybody likes to talk about... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm cutting no, you off. No, that's okay. There's no significant technical reason to get an iPhone anymore. It's now, it is only user preference. And I keep hearing people say, well, I had this problem with an, with an Android. Okay, how long ago was that? And you hear them talk about like a Galaxy S5. Um, <laughs> or the Galaxy S2 that uh, would burn up in my pocket. Yeah, but now those problems are nailed down. And a lot of the time with Android, it's people that go hog wild on their devices. Like they download every third thing. They they take 20,000 pictures a day and choke their memory. And Apple's suffer from that too because Apple's cloud store will, will choke and then it'll force everything onto your device. And like the, the problems are not specific to devices anymore. People just, it, what was it you said? It's, it's that Stockholm syndrome. That's what it is. It's product stock. Ooh, fuck yes. It's that product Stockholm syndrome. That's all it is at this point. I had Apple had one device that I thought was great, and I'm hoping Android comes out with something kind of like it. Because I have a Samsung TV, and that TV is badass. It's been hanging on for years. And it's a smart TV, but it uses Tizen. And Tizen's oh. fine. It's, no, no, no. It's fine. It's stable. I've, I've, heard, but it has, I've heard not good things about Tizen. It's fine. It's stable. It works. The TV doesn't suddenly crack. Tizen's fine. Tizen operationally is not a problem. Tizen does not support. Okay, go get it, Danger. This is, this is all you, Danger. Tizen doesn't support anything. So like Paramount Plus, CBS, the streaming service, like Star Trek, for example, is on. There's ones closer to you on the ground first. Get those on your left and your right. Um, you can use me as a shield. Tizen doesn't have a market. So like when, when CBS stopped making their Paramount app, I had to stop directly streaming stuff off of my Samsung TV. Over here, Danger, way closer to you. Oh, you're over there now. It doesn't matter, I guess. What's that? Just pay attention. Pay attention. Head on a swivel, everything. Oh. Here, Ooh. come up these stairs. Oh, he's going to get bottlenecked. Oh, come up yeah. the stairs when you're open. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. All right. I need six more. Oh, All there's right. that many here. Just, just head on a swivel and look around you, because you went by a huge pocket of them earlier. But yeah, like, I can't stream, like, Star Trek directly on my Samsung TV anymore. I would like... Apple did this with the Apple TV, where it ran on iOS, but it was independent from your TV. But it turned any TV into an iOS TV. Mm. If there was, like, a Google TV, 
or an Android TV, I would buy that yesterday so I could also put my Android apps on it. There, there was, but didn't last No, it long. didn't hold. Yeah, it's just integrated into you. They, they, people want to integrate it into their TVs. Right. That should well, have been I, it for you. I, okay, I, I reached, I, I, I reached the, um, the, the. Okay, cool. So we gotta. Oh shit! So we gotta complete the level to to have it count. Let me right now. Yeah, it All right, was. Next, this will continue with the story. It's it's funny too, cause like people always talk about iMessage and like, and I tell people I was like, you know what, Android. A lot of times, Android is just bad. Like. Google and Android, they're bad at marketing and stuff because a lot of these features they have, like, there is an iMessage like um, app for, for Google, but they don't advertise it or say, hey, you know, we have something similar to iMessage. I'm like, yo, y'all do. Because they do. They do have something similar to iMessage. They just, I don't know, they just don't market their stuff. Like, like how they had, for the longest, they, they didn't have FaceTime. Now they have FaceTime called Duo, and Duo works on Android and iOS now. So, like, it always worked on Android and iOS, so it's kind of like, but again, they weren't really pushing it forward. I think Google's mentality of, here's this stuff, find it on your own, has kind of been their thing, as to where Apple's like, this is what you're going to use on our systems, and we're going to remind you every third minute yeah. that this is what you're going to use on our systems. Shoot, they, shoot, Google even had, like, a challenger to WhatsApp, but then... <laughs> Edward Snowden killed their hopes and dreams. Because Edward Snowden, I guess, he looked at it. He looked at it. It was called Allo. They had an app that was supposed to compete with, like, Messenger and WhatsApp and Signal and all that, and Telegram, all that stuff. They had an app called Allo. What? Yo, Edward Snowden took one look at that. He was like, yo, everybody don't get this shit. And he outlined why. He was like, Google's going to be taking your, all your messages. They're using, their, they're using it to build their... Their AI machine and AI learning and machine learning. Basically, he was saying how Alloy was just a big repository or a big repository or a um, big experiment like a, to Google to like feed the machine messenger learning. app out there. But that's okay. He was just like, it was just a big thing to feed their machine learning. He's like, don't get it. He told, he said, told, he told everybody, don't get it. And like every other messaging system out there, he just didn't like that one for some reason. The only 